Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, clap our hands. Let's give God some praise in this house. Oh, come on, you can better than that. Come on, let's clap our hands. Let's give God some praise in this house. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. And he's worthy of the honor. Would you just stand to your feet and help us give God the best praise that you can? Come on. I know it's early in the morning, but God is still worthy of all of the praise. He's still worthy of all of the glory. And I don't know about you, but if you're happy and you know it, come on and just put your hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah. As we look to Christ for prayer, Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity just to say thank you. We thank you, God, for another opportunity just to be in your house this morning for worship. We pray, God, that you will have thine own way this morning. God, do whatever you want to do, God. Visit us today, God. Let your glory fall fresh upon us today. And we give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praise. God, we come praying, God, that you will meet the needs of your people this morning. God, whatever they need from you this morning, God, meet it right now in the name of Jesus. God, we come praying, God, that your word will go forth this morning, God, that it will send change and convictions today in the name of Jesus. And God, we pray in advance. God, for any dark person that's among us, God, that is sick, God, send down your healing power this morning in the name of Jesus. God, you said in your word, God, that you was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon you, and with every strife, we are healed, and we claim healing this morning God, in the name of Jesus. God, we come praying, God, God, that you will meet the needs of your people, God. God, somebody has been crying all night long, but you said in your word, God, that weeping uh, may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. Uh, and we praise your name, God, uh, for our morning season. God, we praise your name uh, that victory is already ours. Uh, and we're not going to wait until the battle is over. Uh, but God will shout right now uh, in the enemy's face. Uh, God will give you a name to praise even right now uh, with tears in our eyes. Uh, and we thank you, God, uh, for loving us through our pain, uh, for loving us through our sin. Uh, we thank Thank you, God, for traveling grace and journey mercy. Lord, we just want to say thank you because you've been better to us than we've been to our own selves. And God, just say yes to your will. Yes, we'll obey you this morning, God. God, whatever you want to do this morning, have your way. And this is in the name of Jesus we do pray. And every heart say amen. Come on, open up your mouth and give up the praise.
belongs to God. Hallelujah. At this time, I'd like to tell you want to come down to the altar for all to pray. Family that prays together, stays together.
all of our announcements. Amen. Amen. I want to uh, recognize Sister Regina Banks. Amen. Come on. And let's celebrate. Come on, stand up. Sister Regina has, uh, has a certificate of completion and a certificate of graduation from her drug program. Come on, hey, let's celebrate. Oh, come on, Sister Go. We can do better than that. Come on. And let's celebrate our own. God is still healing. God is still delivering. God has still got all power in his hand. I wish I had a real church in here. Come on, let's celebrate our own. God is doing some amazing things. And we celebrate you today, Sister Regina. We celebrate what God is doing in your life. And you keep on keeping on. And watch how God will continue to make a wonderful life that he has in store for you. Come on, once more again. One more again. Let's celebrate Sister Regina Banks. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. I want to ask everyone to please stand and turn to 1 Peter. Chapter number two. First Peter. Chapter number two. I'm not going to be before you too long this morning. completely until I had kids of my own and I watch my kids grow up and I watch them move from a stage of they could not do anything by themselves yeah. to a stage where they want to do everything right, right. by themselves yeah. a few months ago my daughter Dior was in a dance show and when it came time for Dior to perform on the stage with her friends she stood on the stage and said no. She said, no, I'm not dancing today, even though she had been to every rehearsal. We took her to every practice that was available to her. And when it came time for her to shine bright like a diamond, she stood on the stage, folded her arms, and said no. So as a good parent, me and Celeste looked and said, well, maybe dance is not for her. Maybe she's not passionate about dance like we thought she could be. But we kept her in dance until the end of the year and to our surprise on this past weekend, they had their ending dance show. And Dior, not only did she perform to, a stand, to the highest standard of excellence, but she really wowed and impressed me and her mother. Now, now I can look at her and say, well maybe, Maybe, just maybe, she has a passion for dance after all. But last night as I uh, went home and I began to think and pray uh, about today's message, I said, Lord, now I think I understand.
understand what you are trying to say. Because a few months ago, uh, Dior would not get up on the stage and do the routine that she knew. But the strange thing about uh, Dior Mama Wilson is that at home, she's dancing. At home, uh, she's singing. At home, uh, she's doing all of the dance steps. But when it came time to do it in front of people, she wouldn't want to do it. But yesterday, she did it uh, to a standard of excellence. And now, I can say growing is a process. Do I have a witness in here? Uh, she went from uh, one stage of development of not wanting to do anything at all to now she did everything that she was supposed to do on key and on target. Just maybe Dior had to go through a growing process because just because something may be hard doesn't mean that you need to give up on it. Just because something uh, doesn't work out the first time uh, doesn't mean you gotta just quit and give up and throw in the towel. But baby, you got to learn uh, that if you're going to grow in anything in life, you got to keep on going uh, because growing is a process. Uh, do I have a witness in here? And see the growth. We are in the stages of growing. Uh, we are in the stages of developing uh, a brand new ministry. And I cannot tell you, uh, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, it's not going to happen just like how we may want it to happen. But it's in fact that you have to realize that everything uh, is in the timing uh, of God. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Uh, so growth is a process and we cannot skip the process process of growth. It is a journey uh, that every person uh, must go through. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Uh, and Peter is saying uh, in this text uh, that not only is growing a process, uh, but you have to learn uh, that while you're on this process, while uh, you are on this journey we call life, uh, trying to get to heaven, uh, there are some things you got to do uh, in order to make the process a whole lot easier. Do I have a witness in here? And he says in this text, I hope you didn't close your Bible. He said in verse number one, so put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and slander. The reason why I see the grove, this is so important because these are qualities no Christian should have. You shouldn't have malice in your heart. You shouldn't have deceit in your heart. You should be a hypocrite. You should be envying nothing. And you show should be doing nothing that's slanderous to anybody. So Christ is letting us know that if you want this process to be a lot easier and smoother, you got to learn how to act. Do I have a witness in here? Growing up in my grandmother's house, we used to go to church every Sunday morning. And a lot of the other kids would be in church playing around. A whole lot of the kids uh, Sister Chantel uh, will have phones in their hands. Uh, a lot of them will have little toys uh, to keep them occupied uh, during church. Uh, but my grandma wouldn't let me have nothing in church. Uh, she said, boy, you're going to sit there and listen uh, and you're going to respect the house of God. Uh, I don't care uh, what everybody else is doing. Uh, you represent me. Uh, and as long as you live in my house, uh, sleep in my bed, uh, drink my water, uh, you're going to do uh, exactly what I tell you to do. Huh? Do I have a witness in here? Huh? And Jesus Christ uh, is letting us know uh, that if you want to call yourself uh, uh, children of God, uh, if you want to have the anointing of God, uh, if you want to have complete salvation, uh, then baby, you got to learn uh, to follow the rules of God uh, and do exactly uh, what he says. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Uh, it's not an easy Process. Uh, it's not an easy process uh, because uh, it's hard sometimes. Uh, because every now and then, uh, Negroes will get on your nerves uh, and people will make you want to just cuss them out. Uh, oh, y'all ain't going to talk back to me here today. Uh, people will get underneath your skin uh, and people will irritate you uh, faster than the police department. Uh, but you got to understand uh, that if God be for me, uh, who shall? Just look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor it's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. As verse number two says, like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk. It's funny, but Melvin, 
uh, DJ, my son, he'll be turning one in uh, just a couple days. And now, you know, he gets to a place where if he's crying or fussing, you know, we'll give him a bottle, you know? Uh, yesterday, me and Benice tried to give him a bottle, he put his hand up and just like, uh-uh, I don't want that. <laughs> tried to give it to him again, nah, push it away, nah, I don't want that. Okay, well, I told him, uh, Sister Lucretia, I told him, I said, you know what, son, you better enjoy this milk while you can. Because in a couple weeks, I'm not buying no more infamil. I'm not buying none of this uh, powder milk that you're so used to drinking because come the 28th of May, you graduate from the infant meal to you finna start drinking regular milk. I want you to witness it here. So you can deny it all you want to, but at some point you have to give it up anyway to have a witness in here. And Christ is saying that even as newborn infants in Christ, there are certain things you may want, there may be some things you may yearn for, but at the end of the day, it's gonna, it's gonna come a time in your life where you gotta grow on up. You gotta you gotta look yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, I can't I can't cuss people out the way I really want to. I, I can't go out uh, and do the things that I thought I could do. There comes a point in your life where you just say, you know what, I'm too old to be acting like this. I'm, I'm too old to, to be caring all like this. I can't be living my life just no any old kind of way because you know a lot of us in here are, are, are real grown. A lot of us in here are real grown and when we were 20 uh, in our early 20s we used to do a whole lot of things uh, that we thought was fun then but we look at it now like man I sure did waste uh, a whole lot of my time uh, doing stuff that didn't even get me nowhere because you're so in a hurry uh, to go from preteens uh, to adulthood uh, and when you got 18 you realize how hard uh, life really is. Uh, living by yourself and paying rent. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me in here. Uh, but you have to understand uh, that God wants us to grow up uh, because he did not plan uh, for us to be babies uh, forever. Do I have a witness in here? I'm, I'm, I'm Sister Jerry, I'm, I'm, I'm new to this parenting thing and, and, and I'm still trying to adjust um, but I know one day Dior is going to grow up and she's going to blossom and she's going to attract some guys and I know that she's going to want to go on dates and one day she's going to go to prom and all that, you know, the nails and the hair. I'm still trying to adjust right now. I'm not there yet. Yeah, yeah. But I know one day it's going to come. Do I have a witness in here? Because I did not plan for her to be an infant forever. You know, every now and then we may want them to stay a baby forever, but they're going to grow up eventually. Yeah, yeah. They'll have a witness in here. Yeah. And Christ is saying that once you first come into salvation, you're a baby. Yeah. You're an infant. You're, you're small. You're still on the infant meal. But Christ did not expect you to be on milk your entire life. Do you have a witness in here? He, he did not intend uh, for you to be in diapers forever. Do you have a witness in here? Uh, at some point in your life, uh, Christ says, when uh, are you going to grow up uh, and start to yearn uh, for more of me? When are you going to grow up in your spiritual man uh, and say, Christ, uh, I want more of your word. I want more of your anointing. I want more of your power. I want more of your spirit. Christ is saying, at some point, in your life, you gonna have to grow up and see the growth. This is our time now to start the process of us growing, not just as a church, but individually. Do I have a witness in here? And if see the growth, if you're gonna grow in God, you cannot wait until Sunday morning to open up your Bibles. You cannot wait until Wednesday and then you want to start praying. No. If you want to grow up in God, come Monday morning, you got to be in your word. Come on Tuesday morning, you got to be in your word. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but Josh, you got to be in your word. Because you want to grow spiritually. Do I have a witness in here? So he says that if you want to grow, uh, the, to, 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 to yearn for the more pure milk, and by you may grow into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord 
is good. Amen. Do I have a witness in here? Yes. All of us in here should be at a point in our life where we know just how good God is. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have a witness in here? Yeah. All of us in here has been saved long enough yes. to know yes. how good he really is to us. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have a witness in here? Yeah. Yeah. God is so good yes, that we realize that even when I was broken, the Lord still provided for me. Yeah. The Lord is so good that even when I was sick, the Lord still healed me. The Lord is so good that when I didn't have uh, nothing else going on, the Lord stepped in and turned uh, my life around. Uh, so you have to understand, see the grow, uh, that once you develop and grow in God, uh, you realize how good uh, he really is. Uh, you didn't know how you didn't know uh, that you can pray like you pray now uh, until you got a prayer life. Uh, you didn't know uh, that you can operate in the things of God uh, until you developed a, a relationship with the Lord. Uh, you didn't know uh, that you can cast out demons uh, until uh, you got into uh, the word uh, of God. So preacher, yes. telling me that it's time to grow. Yes. How do I grow? I'm so glad you asked me the question. Hallelujah. Number one, you got to be committed to God's will. Yes. Yes. You got to be committed to God's will. Yes. Not your own will, God's to God's will. Yes. And when you get to a place in your life, Brother Josh, where you say, I want God's will, yes, yes. you are saying, God, you are in complete control. Yes, Lord. However, Hallelujah. you want to do it, yes. it's fine with me. All yes. right, all right. You got to be careful yes. what you pray and ask God. Yes. Yes. Because you just might get it. Yes, yes. <laughs> you you got to be real cautious when you kneel down in prayer and say, Lord, can you do this for me? Yes. Now be real careful what you ask God for right. because God is just crazy enough to give you exactly right. what you ask him for. Right. While Jesus was at the Garden of Gethsemane, he was praying. He said, Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. Do I have a witness in here? But it comes with a price. It comes uh, with a weight that you have to be ready to endure. If you say that you want to grow in God, if you say that you want to get more of God, you want to get closer to God, guess what? The enemy has now heard you. And the enemy is going to come and try to distract you. The enemy is going to come and try to get you off of your path. The enemy is going to come and try to tear up your whole life because you have made a commitment to the will of of God. The devil may not know your future, but he knows your past. And he knows what he can do to irritate you. He knows what he can do to get you off track. He knows how to get underneath your skin. But when you are committed to the will of God, you'll let nothing separate you. So glad, so glad. That Sister Regina came this morning with her papers of completion uh, saying that I made a vow to God. I'm not going to go back to what I used to be. I'm not going to go back uh, to what how I used to act. God has brought me too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I refuse yeah. to go back now. Do I have a witness in here? Huh? And once you have gotten uh, your deliverance from God, uh, and once you have seen the light, and once you have experienced more of him, uh, baby, I ain't trying to go back uh, to the old lifestyle. I ain't trying to go back to you. I ain't going to talk back to me in here. Huh? Because God has brought me through too much. God has made too many ways for me. Uh, and I refuse to let the enemy uh, try to get me off my track now. Do I have a witness in here? Not only do you have to be committed to God's will, number two, please write this down. You got to be connected to His Word. You got to be connected to His Word. David was uh, known to be uh, a man after God's own heart. 
David had many sins and many flaws and many errors in his life. But one thing David had, he had the word of God on the inside to have a witness in him. That's why David said, this word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against it. You got to get the word on the inside. Do I have a witness in here? Bishop Rodgers, if he was here, he would say, you got to let the word do the work. Do I have a witness in here? And once you get the word on the inside of you, it will begin to produce some real fruit. Do I have a witness in here? But you got to get it. On the inside. Yes, yes. Growing up, my grandmother's house, I couldn't do too much. But one thing I did do is to go outside and water the grass all the time. Hallelujah. When I went outside, Sister Mary used to put the water hose on, stand up there for about three, four hours. The water bill would be pretty high at the end of the month, but I was standing out there and just watering the grass. And I didn't care because I wasn't paying the bill. So I was just watering the grass, yes, <laughs> doing my own little thing, having my own quiet time, listening to my music, watering the grass, mm -hmm. doing my own thing. And once I saw how the grass is beginning to grow, I realized, uh, uh, Sister Muriel, that it didn't happen overnight. Yeah, yeah. We'll have a witness in here. The water had to uh, soak into the soil. Yeah, yeah. Had to get down to the roots yeah. of the grass. Yeah. And once it got all of, the, all of the minerals and the vitamins that it needed to grow, and once the sun hit it, it began to grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have a witness in here. But it started first with the water. Without the water, the dirt has nothing to work with. Without the water, the, 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 the soil that's in the ground has nothing to work with. You gotta give God something to work with. Right witness in here. You can't say, God, I want this kind of lifestyle. God, I want to do this. And he said, Well, what are you gonna give me to work with? You gotta keep my word on the inside of you so I can make you a living example. So nobody in this place today uh, that can ever say in your heart uh, that God is not a deliverer. Uh, you cannot say in your heart uh, that God is not a deliverer uh, because I'm looking at Sister Regina today uh, and I can tell you that God is uh, a deliverer. Uh, but you have to give God something uh, to work with. Uh, you have a witness in here. Uh, and once Sister Regina made up in her mind, uh, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to continue to do uh, the things I used to do. Uh, I'm going to give God something to work with, and that's my life. That ain't going to talk back to me in here. And once you give God something to work with, uh, just look at what he can do. Uh, just look at what God can produce if you give him something yeah, yeah. to work with. Yeah, yeah. Got to be connected yeah, yeah. to his word. Yeah. So not only do you need to be committed to his will, connected to his word, lastly, you got to be consistent in worship. You got to be consistent in worship. Now when I say being consistent in worship, I'm not talking about coming to church. I don't have a witness in here. The Bible says that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Everybody can praise God, yes. but not everybody can worship. Yes. Yes. The reason why everybody can praise is because everyone has breath. Yes. 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 But not everybody can worship because worship requires to have a real relationship yes. with the Lord. Yes. Yes. The witness in here. Yes. See, when we praise God, we praise Him for what He has done. Yes. Yes. When we worship God, we worship God for who He is. Yes. Do I have a witness in here? And how can you know who God is if you don't spend no time with him? That's right. That's right. That's right. How, 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 how are you going to know who God really is if you're not consistent in building a relationship with the Lord? You have a witness in here. So now, if you want to grow in God, you got to grow your relationship with the Lord. And how do you grow your relationship with the Lord? Look at your name and tell your name, you got to talk to the Lord. Do I have a witness in here? And once you learn to talk to God about your day, as long as you realize that you communicate with God about your problems, when you learn to talk to God about what's going on in your life, you 
are developing a, a real relationship with the Lord. And once you have a real relationship with the Lord, you can come in church and you don't need no praise team. When you really got a relationship with the Lord, you don't need no musicians. When you really got a relationship with the Lord, you don't need nobody to pump and prime you. Because I've been spending time with the Lord all week long. Do I have a witness in here? So as I get ready to close, see the growth. I want you to realize that now is the time for us to grow on up. It's time for us as a church to grow in a spiritual maturity. It's time for us as Cedar Grove Baptist Church to grow up in God. And once we learn how to grow up in God, the Lord will come through for us. When we learn how to grow up in God, then that's when the Lord will stop by 7623. Do I have a witness in here? God bless you, Cedar Grove. God bless you real good. I'm on my way to my seat now. But I stop by here to let you know today that it's time to grow up in God. It's time for us to put away the milk. It's time for us to put away the bottle. It's time for us to take off the diaper. And now it's time for us to start eating some fried chicken and collard greens.
make him the center of your life. And I promise you, making Jesus your choice will be the best thing that you can ever do in your life. Will there be one today? Maybe you are saved, but someone little line you backslid and you want to give your life back to the Lord. Now is your time to come. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Don't worry about who may judge you. All you want to do is please God. You can care less what people got to say. Will there be one today? If you don't have a church home, see the grove, we open our doors to you. We'll love to be your church family. Not a church that's based on religion, but a church that builds relationships with God. Let's see the grove be your church today. I love to be your pastor. Will there be one today? Tomorrow is not promised. I said tomorrow is not promised.